with the increase in publishers, how best can we encourage his experienced or nervous ones to preach effectively in a way that lets them know that they are doing Jehovah's will under the direction of the faithful slave and their king, Christ Jesus. At the same time, how can we assist any publishers who dearly wish to preach publicly but may need help by being accompanied? Newly unbaptized publishers, they may find it difficult to vary their presentation even though it has now changed to a more natural approach. But they can do it effectively with the help of the Holy Spirit, the faithful slaves' encouragement, and further assistance from shepherds and overseers. So why is all this necessary? Preaching publicly is by no means an easy task, especially if we find speaking openly difficult, or if we are not naturally confident. This work is considered by many who are not Jehovah's Witnesses to be a clear expression of boldness. And they would be correct as knocking on a stranger's door to tell them the good news is boldness and delivering a public address is boldness and accompanying someone who is preaching, that is boldness too. The Apostle Paul set a fine example at Acts 20.20 20, after summoning the Ephesian elders to Miletus. He reminded them that he did not hold back from telling them any of the things that were profitable, nor from teaching them publicly and from house to house. Paul reminded them that just like circuit overseers today, Paul had shown them how to preach from house to house. How can we then consider the concept of boldness from the perspective of God's word while preaching? This is worth considering because showing a similar boldness to that of Jesus would certainly be an integral part of following his steps closely according to 1 Peter 2.21. Proverbs 1.20 in the Septuagint reflects the personality of Jesus as God's master worker saying, Wisdom is praised in the ways and in the streets it leads with boldness. In the New World Translation it says, True wisdom itself keeps crying aloud in the very street. In the public squares it keeps giving forth its voice. Similarly, Jesus, whilst personified as wisdom, is also portrayed at Proverbs 8.3 where it reads in the New World Translation, at the side of the gates, at the mouth of the town, at the going in of the entrances, it keeps crying loudly. These phrases convey the idea that Jesus showed true boldness that was recognised and celebrated in life's paths and in public spaces as he spoke and acted with confidence. Proverbs 1.20 is in fact the only occasion where the Greek word used for boldness, parisian, also used for the word public, appears within the Greek Septuagint. Both Proverbs 1.20 and 8.3 emphasise the public proclamation and presence of wisdom in places of authority and access where it is near to rulers, gates or in open public spaces. Can we publicly express this same boldness 
the most common Greek word for boldness, perisian, used within the scriptures, is almost exclusively found within the Christian Greek scriptures and occurs many times as one of the following. Confidence, boldness, outspokenness, outspokenly, freeness of speech, publicly and in open public. One problem that may arise with having as many as five different expressions for parousia within the scriptures is that each of these can become a separate topic in their own right. For instance, confidence as a strength can be desirable and sought after with a whole article dedicated to its achievement. But then again, freeness of speech could also be the subject of another in-depth study or outspokenness could be or public speaking but all these different topics are described in one single Greek word namely parousia and this emphasizes the benefit of having just one single term within God's word that is consistently used for parousia such as spoke publicly or spoke boldly and this would allow for a situation where those not considered as naturally bold such as lowly Galileans could surprise their new audience by speaking boldly or themselves not being naturally <coughs> bold individuals. This would coincide, so, coincide with examples such as the unnamed little Israelite girl who boldly spoke to Naaman, the Syrian army chief, or young David approaching the battle lines and boldly challenging Goliath, or Jeremiah, or the so-called minor prophets declaring Jehovah's message by means of parousia. <coughs> <coughs> If we take the words used to convey the meaning of parousia altogether, we see that it conveys the act itself of speaking an unpopular message of truth in public with little fear of any likely negative response and without any natural strength. This could describe standing before opposers or simply calling on our neighbours to preach the good news publicly. If nervous or inexperienced publishers fully realise that they are expressing boldness even when they simply accompany others, they can be more confident. Various translators have had free reign to place any terms or phrases that they see fit into God's word for the same word, parousia, whereby the original intended audience only had a single word which made it an easier concept for them to grasp. In 399 BCE, the philosopher Socrates made parousia his personal approach which became more popular after he was executed because he showed they preferred to live in Athens with this outspokenness leading to his execution rather than an option of banishment from Athens. Given the choice, he chose death by poisoning. In harmony with Proverbs 120 and as the personification of wisdom, as shown in Proverbs 8, Jesus was supremely outspoken in passages such as Luke 4, 23 to 27, where he nearly got thrown off a cliff by his fellow Nazarenes, and John chapters 8 to 10, where religious zealots picked up stones to stone him privately, and John eleven fifty four, where parousia is also used, as it says, hence Jesus no longer walked about publicly, Parousia, 
among the Jews, showing that making himself available publicly was boldness. And Jesus clearly spoke with more boldness in Matthew 23 during his scathing expose of the religious leaders and on two other occasions when he cleared the temple of those declared by him as making God's house a den of thieves. Additionally, with the early disciples being outspoken, this immediately drew comments from others as to where these unlettered and ordinary men acquired such outspokenness. This was a factor that caused them to recognise that they had been with Jesus. So can we cultivate the same boldness, and if so, how? This Greek word, parousia, and related words used within the Christian Greek scriptures refer to the action of speaking out publicly that comes about after a conscientious reflection of God's word and whilst accompanying the courage obtained from it. Parousia is not in itself defined as courage, but as a resultant active outspokenness of early Christians that emanated from courage. There are 31 occurrences of parousia, parousien, or parousias in the Christian Greek scriptures, and yet one instance of parousian between Genesis and Malachi. Some confusion can arise if we were to solely use the English word boldness for parousia, as if it is a personality trait or an emotion or a strength that we may find difficult to emulate. The English word boldness is defined as the quality of being confident, courageous and willing to take risks, often without hesitation or fear. It can imply a sense of daring or audacity in facing challenges or confronting difficult situation. Boldness may also suggest a disregard for conventional norms or caution. But from the scriptures, it is courage that we obtain by meditating on God's word and by praying for it so that we can be outspoken and more capably exercise our freedom of speech in the face of opposition. The English term boldness could be perceived as an inappropriate translation of parousia, whereas freedom of speech or confidence described within God's word could be more appropriate and further naturally bold individuals could possibly consider themselves to be at an advantage over those who are not so inclined to be bold. This could explain why the term boldness is not the most common rendition of the Greek word parousia. The scriptures do not ask us to cultivate boldness, freeness of speech or outspokenness as a distinct quality or fruitage of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible does exhort us to be bold or outspoken with courage, courage being a separate and distinct quality. So how can we be more easily exercising the word boldness as used in God's word? Philippians 1.14 records Paul saying, Now most of the brothers in the Lord have gained confidence because of my prison bonds, and they are showing all the more courage to speak the word of God fearlessly. Notice Paul says most, and not all of the brothers, gained confidence. And confidence in Philippians 1.14 is said to come because of Paul's prison bonds. So we can gain confidence when we consider what Paul endured. This can result in obtaining more courage to speak fearlessly. Speaking the word of God fearlessly is what boldness is within the scriptures. So it's more of an action 
and a quality such as courage. We can ask also for the power beyond what is normal, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 7, to have sufficient courage to act with boldness. This way, courage and boldness are distinct from each other, but work hand in hand, and this outspokenness then comes as a result of such courage obtained from God's Word and His Holy Spirit. It is the case that with the power beyond what is normal, any servant of Jehovah can display parousia by speaking in public or in private. And what they need to do is prayerfully consider the examples where Jehovah has previously helped such ones to display parousia and place themselves in situations where they are more likely to get an opportunity to do what may simply include accompanying another servant and speaking when they feel inclined. It would then be a case of taste and see that Jehovah is good. How important is parousia then to Jehovah, Jesus and ourselves? Bear in mind that Genesis 3.15 indicates that there would be enmity between the serpent and the seed of the woman. Revelation 12.9 exposes the devil as the original serpent. And Jesus clearly showed enmity at John 8.44 by openly exposing Satan as the father of the lie and his seed as liars and murderers. This exposure led to his listeners picking up stones to stone him in the treasury and that's shown at John 8, 20 and 59. It was not until John eleven fifty four that Jesus paused Parousia. It says there, Hence Jesus no longer walked about publicly, parousia, among the Jews. So, walking about publicly, just as one may accompany another on the cart or from house to house, is parousia. Revelation 2.16 speaks of the long sword of his mouth. And this is displayed as much by public condemnation as it will be in the final destruction of the wicked. So, parousia is as important as the universal sovereignty issue. New publishers, or nervous ones, can be helped in the same way as Paul had with the Ephesian elders, who he accompanied from house to house. And any inactive ones who may wish to accept encouragement by being accompanied in the house to house ministry can be reassured that they can do an introduction when they feel ready or engage in conversation at their leisure. This would allow them to be part of the public proclamation of the good news and exercise their freedoms of speech or parousia. As attempts to accompany other publishers or shepherds increase, it is guaranteed that Jehovah will grant to his slaves to keep speaking his word with all boldness. So rather than it be an internal strength, or quality, or personality trait, boldness or outspokenness or freedom of speech is granted to us by Jehovah, and we will be made bold under the circumstances that we place ourselves in even if it is simply accompanying others on the cart.